Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral researcher based in Vienna, Austria. Today I want to talk about heart rate variability, which is one of the most important measurements of the Aura Ring. In addition to tracking your general health, the heart rate variability measurements of the Aura Ring are being used in several COVID-19 studies. That is because when you get sick, your heart rate variability tends to drop, which means it can be used as an early warning system. Even the MBA is now using the Aura Ring as a potential early warning system for COVID-19. However, how accurate are the heart rate variability measurements of the Aura Ring? Well, in this video I describe the experiment where I tested that for you, and I will also discuss the findings of a recent scientific paper into the heart rate and heart rate variability measurements of the Aura Ring. I was happy to see that the heart rate and heart rate variability measurements of the Aura Ring are pretty accurate, though there are a few caveats. I will first briefly introduce the concept of heart rate variability and what its implications might be for you. But if you want to skip to the results, I'll put the timestamps right here. We all know what heart rate is. It's the number of times your heart beats in a minute. So say while watching this video your heart rate is 60 beats per minute. That means in any given minute your heart beats about 60 times. However this does not mean that your heart beats perfectly at one beat per minute. It just means that on average over those 60 seconds your heart beats 60 times. But the time between heartbeats can vary. Maybe between this heartbeat and the next it takes 1.2 seconds and then to the next one it takes 0.8 seconds. But don't worry, this variation in the time between heartbeats, which is what we call heart rate variability, is actually a normal thing. Now I won't go into all the details of heart rate variability in this video, but to put it in really simple terms, a larger heart rate variability is better, assuming that you don't have any underlying conditions. Stress and poor sleep quality can for instance temporarily lower your heart rate variability, whereas if you're more physically fit, you tend to have a lower heart rate but a higher heart rate variability. So if you track your heart rate variability with something like the Aura Ring, that means you can optimize it both in the short term and in the long term. Say that today you see you have a lower heart rate variability than normal, that means you might have gone through something stressful and you might want to take it easy today. Whereas over time you're slowly seeing your heart rate variability increase, that might mean that your fitness regimen is working and you're slowly getting more fit, so good for you. There are also other factors that heart rate variability is associated with. As I mentioned before, it tends to drop when you're getting sick, but also smoking, alcohol and dehydration have been linked to a lower heart rate variability. And you can even use heart rate variability to see what your workout regimen should be like that day. A small side note, when you inhale, the time between heartbeats tends to increase, meaning that your heart beats slower, whereas when you exhale, the time between heartbeats tends to decrease, so your heart rate is slower. You might even be able to feel this when you put your fingers on your neck and try to feel your heartbeat when you're breathing. Now, back to the Aura Ring. We can only use the heart rate variability measurements of the Aura Ring to improve our health if they are accurate. Now recently the Aura Ring team published this paper in a scientific journal claiming that the heart rate and heart rate variability measurements are super accurate. They did this by comparing the Aura Ring against the medical grade ECG or electrocardiogram device. Of course I wanted to put this to the test myself so for a couple of nights I wore both this ECG chest strap, the Polar H10 and the Aura Ring to bed and I'll compare their heart rate and heart rate variability measurements. I made my analyses and plots as similar as I could to the ones they show in the paper and also to the ones that you see in your app. Now let's first have a look at heart rate. So here you see heart rate on the vertical axis and my time in bed on the horizontal axis and you can see that I was in bed for a total of about 7 hours, so 0 is the moment I went to bed. And in their paper the Aura team divides the night up into 5 minute segments, so that's what I also did here. And I calculated the average heart rate for each of those segments. And in red I plotted the Aura Ring, and in blue I plotted my results for the Polar ECG strap. Now I'm assuming here that the Polar ECG chest strap is more accurate at measuring heart rate than the Aura Ring. Of course I don't know that for sure, but it's purpose made for this, so I assume it's at least 
better and the aura ring should be close to this. So if they both agree, we know it's generally well. And we see that overall there's a very nice agreement between the two. The only thing I can really detect is that there's a few moments, so here, here, here and here, where the polar chest strap says my heart rate was a bit higher than the aura ring. But overall I'm really impressed with the agreement. Now this is one of the better nights because often I have some missing data in my night. That's a night like this where you see that in the aura ring, so in red there are some missing data. So again each dot is a five minute segment, but overall the agreement is still good. And this is a night where we see that there's even more missing data. The overall, at least the range is still good for the aura ring. Now I don't know why there is so much missing data or what is going on there, but I think it might just be the positioning of my aura ring. Maybe it twists over the night. Now I do sometimes forget to twist the aura ring in the exact position that is recommended before going to sleep. So that could have something to do with it. Of course, we want to look at the total agreement between the two. So here on the X axis is my heart rate according to the polar chest strap. And on the Y axis is my heart rate according to the aura ring. And again, each dot is the average heart rate of a five minute segment, similar to what you would see in your aura app. And in red here, I've plotted those where the aura ring could not detect my heart rate. We can see there's a super good agreement between the aura ring and the polar strap. Maybe on average, the polar ring has slightly higher heart rate values or a few outliers that are a bit higher. But overall, the agreement is super well with an R squared of 0.92 for those of you that are interested. What I did notice is that the missing values were often those values where I had a lower heart rate. So we can see here most of them are between 45 and 55 beats per minute. Whereas in this high spectrum, there's almost no missing. So my thought here is that when my aura ring is not perfectly positioned, it can still pick up on the higher heart rates, but it has more difficulty with the lower heart rates, at least for me. But this is just speculation. Now let's compare my results on the left to the results of the Aura Teams paper here on the right. And as you can see, they generally agree pretty well. So also they have on their X axis the ECG device and on the Y axis, so the vertical axis, the Aura Ring. And the general agreement is pretty good between the two. Though also for them, it seems like the Aura Ring sometimes estimates the heart rate a bit too low, similar to what I found that there's more below the line than above the line. But overall, I'm really impressed with the accuracy. Now, let's have a look at heart rate variability. This is a similar plot to what I showed you before. So on the x-axis, we have my time spent in bed. So zero is the time I went to bed and I slept for about seven hours. And on the y-axis, we have my heart rate variability. Each dot, again, is the average of a segment of five minutes. And in red is my aura ring. And in blue or cyan is the polar chest strap, so the ECG strap. And you can see that the two agree really well. You can see that the patterns are very similar over the whole night. So I'm really impressed with this. Now, of course, there were also some nights with some missing data where the aura ring had more difficulty picking up on the signal. So let's look at those. Here you see one of those nights where you can see that the aura ring here had some missing data, but overall it still follows the general pattern. And here's a night with even more missing data, but you can see that overall the red line, the aura ring, still follows a general pattern of the polar chest strap. So I'm pretty impressed by this accuracy. Let's have a look at the results for all nights combined. That's what I've plotted here. Each dot is again the average heart rate variability of a five minute segment. On the X axis, we have the polar chest strap and on the Y axis, we have the aura ring. In red are those moments where the aura ring could not pick up on heart rate variability and the polar strap could. So again, we see there's a nice agreement between the polar chest strap and the aura ring. So everything on this vertical line would be perfectly the same. What I find interesting is that on the lower heart rate variability, the two agree super well, but as you get higher, there is more variation between the two. So there the aura ring seems to struggle more, assuming that the polar chest strap is correct. And we also see that the moments where the aura ring could not pick up on a heart rate variation, because maybe my aura ring wasn't positioned well or something else was going on, most of these values are in this higher heart rate variability range. And it also seems like more often in this high heart rate variability range, my aura ring predicts it slightly too low, which is also indicated by this blue line here. So this blue line is the best fit through the data. And you can also see that it's slightly shifted towards a lower heart rate variability. So how does this agree with the scientific paper that the people from the aura ring published? Well, that's what you see here on the right. And you see that the plots are pretty similar. And instead of having a blue line like I have plotted here, they plotted this dotted line here. So you can see it's also shifted to a slightly lower heart rate variability for the aura ring compared to the professional EEG device. And that's also what they mentioned in the paper. However, the agreement between the ECG device 
and the Aura Ring, both in their study and in my experiment, is very good. So overall, I'm very impressed with the accuracy of the Aura Ring, both for heart rate variability and heart rate. As you could just see, the agreement in their study was slightly better than the agreement in my experiment. And I think there are two reasons for this. The first is that they used many different people in their study, so they would have a wider range of heart rate and heart rate variability values, so the accuracy would be higher in that way as well. And the second is that for some people in their study, the agreement was much better than for others. And that's what's plotted here. This is a figure from their paper. The first two people agree pretty well, whereas for the third person, they didn't find a good agreement in heart rate variability between the Aura Ring and the ECG. To conclude, the experiment I did and the scientific paper published by the Aura Ring team proves that the Aura Ring can accurately estimate your heart rate and pretty accurately estimate your heart rate variability. There are just two things you have to keep in mind. First of all, when you have missing data throughout your night, these tend to be the moments when you have a low heart rate and a high heart rate variability, which means the average estimates of those nights might be slightly off. So you might get a too low heart rate variability and too high resting heart rate for those nights. The second thing is that the Aura team showed in their paper that the accuracy of the heart rate variability estimates can vary between people. So some people might get better estimates than others. However, overall, I'm personally very satisfied with the accuracy of the heart rate and heart rate variability estimates of the Aura Ring. I think it's a very unobtrusive, easy way of measuring your heart rate and heart rate variability. You don't have to think about it, it just happens. So if you're interested in measuring your heart rate variability and you have some money to spend, I would recommend the Aura Ring. What are your experiences with the Aura Ring and heart rate variability tracking? Well, leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. Because if you like, subscribe or comment, the YouTube algorithm does fancy stuff and shows my videos to more people. But of course, it's totally up to you. For now, I wish you a wonderful day and especially a wonderful night. Sleep well.